So obviously the first thing we want to do is to import the file into Keyshot. And it's usually straightforward, but there's uh, a few things that you want to look out for. To uh, import your file, hit the import button down here on this toolbar. If you don't see it, you can uh, make it appear and disappear by pressing T on the keyboard. Uh, I like to not show it to have space for, for my project and library tabs. Uh, and then just use Control i or Command-I to uh, initiate this import. So from here I go to uh, my desktop and into this resource folder that you also have with the, with the download of this course. And I go into the model folder and select this binoculars.fbx and hit open. Here we get some import options and I will run through them real quick. There's not too much to them. So the first one, uh, the first tab here is location. And we can use that to say that we want to center the, uh, the geometry and we want it to snap to the ground. So it's centered inside the Keyshot scene. We can also say uh, or select keep original if we have like some specific place in in the CAD software where we model it, where we want the, the object to appear. But for now, uh, on this project, we want to center it and snap it to ground. Then there's the op orientation and uh, I'll leave it at Y. You can select between X, Y, C and negative X, Y, C. And it depends on your CAD software, what you're using. Uh, some of them have Y as the up axis and, and some of them have X as up axis um, and so forth. So this is depending on your, your software, but you can always go in afterwards and change this as well. So let's keep it uh, at Y for now. Then we have the environment and camera tab and we want um, to adjust the, the camera in Keyjet to automatically look at geometry. And we also want to adjust the environment to fit the geometry that we are importing. I don't want to import any cameras. That is that if you're in your CAD software, have any camera set up, you can import them into Keyshot as well. But for now, um, it actually really doesn't matter because I don't have any cameras in my file. But if you do and you don't want to import them, uncheck this one. And if you want to have them, check it. Then we have this uh, uh, option to uh, add a material template, but because this is a new project uh, and we are not going to do adjustments and re-import it again, we're not going to use any material template. So leave this uh, unchecked. Then we have the curve import options, which uh, we don't bother because we don't have any curves, curves in the scene. So let's leave it at that and then hit import. Cool, so now we have the binoculars inside Keyshot. And from here, there's a few things that I usually check before doing anything else. And the first thing I, I do is to check if the tessellation of the model is all right. That is that we don't have any jagged edges um, because that's something that uh, really tells that this is a fake 3D model and not a realistic uh, photograph. So what I do is to uh, Double click on the material and change it to a plastic, make it black. And then I look at uh, edges like this and edges like this and see if they are jacked in any way. Uh, and they seem pretty fine for now. To, um, to show what it would look like if it was not okay, I'm going to import uh, another model, which is located in the uh, MISC folder here in the resource folder. It's called binoculars. 260k and I'll just import that. Whoops. So let me just locate it here and snap it to the ground as well. So we have the exact same position. So like this, if I zoom in and hide the uh, original model that we have, you can now see that, uh, this model is has a too low tessellation and you can see these jacked edges here and you can see them here as well. Another way to, uh, to have a look at the geometry is also to add a wireframe material, go to the library tab and just type in wire and you can drag that over and you can see the, uh, the actual wireframe. 
So if we do that for the, the model as well, okay, the materials are linked, cool. So you can see that here we have way more triangles to make these uh, curves and they will get more smooth. Instead of changing the, uh, the actual material of the part, oh, let me just delete that and that and that. You can open up the geometry view by clicking the uh, button up here or hit O on your keyboard. And here in this uh, geometry view, you can go to uh, the shading option up here and select shaded wireframe. And as before in the real time view, you get a, uh, a wireframe showing your your actual wireframe. So we can see again that uh, this is way more dense and gives us smooth edges compared to this one that is too low. If you're experienced that your model has a too low tessellation, um, it depends on the file format what you have to do. If it's an FBX like we have here, you have to go into your software and uh, make sure you have the, that you export it with a higher tessellation. Um, but for example, if you have a step file, you can uh, change it in the import. And I'm just going to show that real quick. So let me open up a new scene. And for the sake of the demonstration, I'm going to import this uh, red bottle cap step file that we have in the MISC folder. So I hit open and a lot of the stuff is the same as the FBX import, but here in the bottom button, we have this geometry tab where we can adjust the tessellation quality. So let's say that I import it at 0 0.01 tessellation quality, hit import. We can see here in the uh, geometry view, if we send and fit the model, that the tessellation is quite low. And also here in the real time view, if we change the material to a shiny plastic, you can see that, uh, yeah, this is really, uh, really too low tessellation. So what you can do here with a step model is to um, import it again, command or control I and hit the same file. And then you can select this object update geometry and actually uh, just type in a, a higher tessellation and hit enter. And then the, uh, the model gets updated. So here you can see the tessellation is way higher and the uh, the highlights are looking smooth. But our binoculars are a, an FBX file. Um, so if uh, they weren't good enough, we had to go back to the CAD software and change it. But luckily they are good enough. All right, so back to the binoculars model. After checking the tessellation quality, I always go in and check the scale of the model as well. Uh, and to do that, I select the top assembly in this uh, scene tree. And down here on the properties, you see uh, a size. So this one tells us that the, the model is 17 times 17 times 6 centimeters. And that sounds actually quite fine for this uh, pair of binoculars. It seems... Uh, seems valid. So I wouldn't do any further with this model. But let's say that uh, it said like it, it was 17 millimeters instead of centimeters, what you could do is uh, go to edit and to the set scene units and you could change the unit to uh, two millimeter and you would have to use this correlate to uh, to convert the, the millimeters to centimeters. So here we are going to do it the other way, just for the sake of the, the demonstration. And you get this warning that it says uh, it might affect texturing and labeling that you have done. So this is why that I remember to do it in the beginning. So I won't run into those issues. And now when uh, we unselect the, uh, the model and select it again here in the scene tree, we see that it's now 17 millimeters. So. Let's change that back to centimeters, like before, hit OK and hit continue. And now we are all set again. And it's important to uh, to stay in the correct 
um, size or scaling because uh, when you apply materials for the library, they um, are made to fit a certain size. So if your model are, are too big or too small, then you will get like the scaling completely wrong. And also if you are creating some materials, if you create it on a wrong scale, then when you apply them to all your other objects that might be in the correct scale, then the, the scaling of the material is off. And also if you work with physical lightings and uh, some uh, special materials, the correct scaling is, is important to get the, the correct look. So keep that in mind. 